Hello everyone, I'm Jamie from the Death's Descent team, and we're proud to show you what we've accomplished over the course of a year. Death's Descent is a grid-based RPG and dungeon crawler similar to MS-DOS Dungeons & Dragons games from 30 years ago. We're targeting old-school PC gamers who enjoy that retro dungeon crawler experience. Imagine yourself as an undead sorcerer or an unkillable warrior. Death's Descent takes place at the beginning of your quest to become unstoppable. Hi, I'm Tyler from the Death's Descent team. Here's our X statement, Grimrock crossed with Elder Scrolls. Grimrock is a good example of a retro-styled grid-based dungeon crawler. Dagonfall on the right is a retro RPG that ran on DOS. Both of these games serve as inspiration to us, Grimrock for the feel of the movement and the dungeon and Daggerfall for its magic spells and RPG elements. The core of our game is based around melee combat, spell casting, collecting items, exploring a dark and dangerous dungeon, customizing your character and equipment, leveling up and becoming stronger, and of course, dying and starting it all over again. Hi, I'm Damon, and I'm going to be going over some of our inspirations. Eye of the Beholder, on the left, is a grid-based dungeon crawler and sits on top of Dungeons & Dragons mechanics. We aim to have the same feel of exploring an uncharted labyrinth in our game as players had when playing Eye of the Beholder. RuneScape is more of a graphical inspiration to us, with its simple yet compelling mechanics. Some more examples of the art styles we're going for are in For the King, shown in the top right, and Dread Delusion, shown in the bottom left. Next, we'll show off what we worked on in Death's Descent, and at the end, we'll show a demo. Hey everyone, it's Tyler again, and I'm going to share some of the things that I've worked on over the year. I made the UI for the player's health, mana, and stamina. I also made it so that these resources are used whenever they attack with melee or magic, as well as when they get hit. The top is what we started with, and the bottom is our current iteration. The main menu has gone through a few different styles, but we finally came to this one, as you see on the bottom right. Our first main menu, the one on the top left, got the job done, but we had a lot placeholder assets. One of the first things we did was change the font, then after that we updated the art assets. The game over screen hasn't changed much since the beginning though. The doors for our game are relatively simple and come in a few different styles. The one on the top right was our first iteration and has one hinge on the side. Later we added a double hinge door and we updated the placeholder texture to make it more clear to the player that it is a door. Getting it working was relatively simple. The player presses a button and it sends a signal for the door to open. We also have doors that can only be opened by pulling the lever that controls them. The player presses a key which activates the lever and opens the door. For players who don't want to find the lever, we have lock picking. Lock picking allows us to add some more depth to our dungeon, which makes it seem a little more real. I also made some weakness charts to go with the different enemies. The player's attacks would deal more or less damage depending on the type of attack and the type of enemy the player is facing. For example, magic casters are weak against melee attacks, but they also have high magic resistance. Hey guys, it's Bryce from the Death Ascent team. While a majority of my work is done behind the scenes in ways that you will not be able to see, here's a few things that I have done that are visible. I made an inventory system that allows the player to equip items by dragging or by right clicking and it'll have them automatically equip and replace any currently equipped items in that slot. I made it so enemies drop loot orbs on death and when you walk over them it'll add the loot to your inventory automatically. I also made a working keybind menu and they are saved between sessions. I created a basic spell implementation and at the moment we have a fireball. We have a wave spell that pierces enemies and continues until it hits a wall, and a chain spell that will bounce off of enemies and walls. While it's very basic, I'd like to continue and flesh out the spell system a bit more in the future with status effects and damage types. But as for things that I've done that aren't as noticeable, I did a large amount of general bug fixing. I also created the system for enemies to detect the player, and I would generally help out other members whenever they needed it. In the future, as I said, I'd like to continue to work on the spell system, but I'd also like to add more item types and mechanics based around items, and also, hopefully, many, many more things to come. It's Damon again, and I want to share the things I've added to the game over the last year. Some of the work I've done is audio, making things like sound effects, such as the skeleton damage noise and the loot pickup jingle, and music, which you have been hearing in the background during the video. 
I also worked on the movement system, which is a blend of real-time movement and a more traditional grid-based system like you'd see in something like Eye of the Beholder. My work also included the enemy AI, which isn't perfect, but it has basic pathfinding towards the player, as shown by these skeletons. I would like to improve on this system by adding more enemy actions and improving the pathfinding functionality. I also worked on getting unique movement types in the game, such as this goblin's burrowing. Some enemies don't move at all, such as this spider, which lurks around corners and ambushes the player. Hello, it's Jamie again, and now I'm going to show some of the things that I worked on. I made the dungeon tiles in Death's Descent using a 3D modeling program called Crocodile 3D. On the left you can see our first iteration of tiles where I made each tile separately, but later I found out it was much easier to just make a basic floor, wall, and ceiling. We decided to use the Godot engine because none of us had any experience with it. Every engine has its quirks, but we ran into a lot of issues early on with Godot. Most of the images on this slide display a depth rendering issue, which took weeks for us to find a solution for. We ran into various small problems like this, such as scenes not being exported to a build if you change their capitalization, or certain file types not exporting by default. Many of these small problems aren't documented well and are difficult to search for. Here's some of the work I did getting items to work in the game. We have item information stored in a spreadsheet, which is then exported to JSON and parsed in Godot. We can then turn this information into the items that you see in the inventory. This system allows us to quickly create new items and have them immediately available in the game. Here's one of my first successful attempts at randomly generating a dungeon. I ran into an undocumented scripting issue, which made debugging difficult. Once I found a solution and added lights and enemies, I was very satisfied with the results. That wraps up the slideshow portion of our presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed the upcoming demo, Death's Descent.